Today, it's my great pleasure to be with Chris Watson. Hi, Chris, how's things? Not too bad at the moment. Well, it'll get worse, Chris, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Chris is the uh, cheap... Cheap. Amongst, amongst <laughs> other things. Cheap. He is cheap. Amongst other things, sorry, Chris. Amongst other things, Chris is the chief hump Hofmeister. I've got that one right, haven't I, I think? Near enough, yes. <laughs> um, but as well as that, um, Chris, you also catalogue the um, the Marilyn uh, Hall, of, Hall of Fame, don't you? That's right, yes. I've just taken over as membership secretary for the Marilyn Hall of Fame. So I look after all the annual numbers and look after the addresses and record any new members as they get to us, as they report into us. Now... Who did you um, take this job over from? Uh, John Metcalf was doing it until last Christmas. Uh, he, he handed it over during 2012, and uh, I've taken it on reluctantly. But uh, pre previous to that, I was, doing the, I was editing the bag logs, and I handed that over to Martin Richardson just before Christmas, so I then took over the membership secretary role. And of course, some of these phrases now, uh, Chris, for the uninitiated, when you say the bag logs, they're part of what? Uh, we, each year we have a Marilyn Hall of Fame newsletter, and within it people can write and tell us what they've done during the year. So it's a log of what they've bagged during the year. Not, uh, a, not a hill by hill log, just any, anything interesting that we've done during the year. And if we take it back one stage for the Uninitiated, what is a Marilyn? A Marilyn is a hill with a prominence of 150 metres. And of course, that originally came out in, I think, 1992? 1992, the relative hills of Britain by Alan Dawson. And of course, it's, it's now progress that there's a few people reaching what is known as, is it the upper tier or the upper? The wall. The upper wall. <laughs> there are three people currently, no, four people currently who have done everything except the two stacks off St Kilda. So that's Rob Woodall, Ken White, Howard Holmes, and most recently Ian Brown. And, um, you know, even that, that is an incredible achievement just to get to that stage. It's well beyond me, so yes, it's uh, amazing that we've done that. And am I correct in saying the current total, is it 1,556? It's 1,555, it may be 1,556 when we finish this survey here today. And the survey that we're on today, it's at the end of the Lean Peninsula? Yes, it's uh, mini analogue, which is uh, uh, currently a submarine and a hump, which uh, we're hoping will, by the end of today or in the next week, be pronounced a new marilyn. Uh, to go with a earlier new Marilyn which Helen found, Helen Dawson found uh, a few weeks ago in near Berwick on Tweed. So the list is ever progressing, isn't it? There's sort of surveys being conducted by Gene J Service and Alan. Yes, but there are two two people or two groups currently uh, currently doing uh, surveys with high level GPS. Uh, yourself with. Uh, John and Graham who are here today and Alan's doing them on his own with a, a, a currently generally on his own. But Alan does has vo he has volunteers as well accompanying him occasionally, doesn't he? I don't know if you call them volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there are occasionally people with him when he's doing it. <laughs> and you being one of them. <laughs> well, yes, yes, but we, we, he doesn't carry as much equipment as uh, as we G and J team, so it's not uh, quite as difficult a job. So, if we again progress back to 1992, Relative Hills book uh, comes out. Your first memories of sort of encountering that book, or encountering what a Marilyn is? Oh, my first memories of encountering it were that my son pointed out it was it was put on fairly quickly onto a Liverpool uh, University. I think it was perhaps the John Moore's site. It was put onto a uh, website at Liver in Liverpool one of the academic websites, and my son was at Sheffield University and he spotted it, and he pointed it out to me. So I had a quick look at it and I said, I won't do those. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was my view at that time. Back in the early 90s, I wasn't going to do that. I was busy finishing my nut holes or stroke bridges at the time, so I wasn't, and, and Munro's, so I wasn't really interested in Marilyn's. So how did you progress to be interested? Uh, 
Uh, I blame Dave Hewitt, I think, is a problem. I told him, when I finished my nut holes, I got in touch with Dave and told him. Because uh, he, he ran a uh, the uh, bagger watch in TGL. So I dropped him an email and said, oh, I've done these. I told him the list that I'd done. And he said, oh, well, I, that's interesting. He said, well, would you be interested in buying these books off me? So he had, I think, three or four tacit tables for Murdo's, Corbett's, Graham's, and also, would you like to buy this RHB book? So he, he was offering them cheap as a job lot. So I fell foul of it and <laughs> the rest is history, as we say. <laughs> so what about in, um, meeting up with Alan for the first time? How did, uh, uh, how did that happen? The first time I met Alan was when <laughs> Rob Woodall organised a trip to uh, the island south of Barra, the Bishop Isle south of Barra, uh, in 2001. And Rob organised it and uh, I, I organised a, a caravan for me and Rob to stay and I had not met Rob before. And, uh, and Alan was there on the trip, along with about 20 other people. Because I, I think one of the great things that have come out of um, Alan and doing the Relative Hills book is the friendships that, um, that have been made. Because now you've got some serious baggers throughout Britain meeting up and you know, going out and enjoying themselves together, haven't you? Yes, well, it, that's how it works out. We do have uh, quite a lot of small groups uh, form each year and go on trips. Uh, we are accused at times of being a bit cliquey, and we try not to be, but uh, the annual get-together is not at all cliquey and everybody can come on it. And trips like the St Kilda trip, which Alan Holmes has just organised, and the Shetland trip, which has just finished, uh, anybody can go on those. And they're, made, they're open to everybody and people get to know each other very well. And I've got some very good friends as a result of climbing Marilyn's. So, at the start of this interview, you mentioned sort of a few names and the people that were doing the um, Marilyn Hall of Fame and Hump Hall of Fame before you took that that over. But um, a couple of other things that you mentioned, uh, Chris, just, just now. One was the, um, you know, the bag logs a few minutes ago, but also the annual meet yes. and the dinner. And again, it... Um, the way that uh, the Marilyns and Marhoffen, which is the, the annual magazine, it's all sort of evolving that, to me, more and more things are happening sort of on an annual basis. And the, the dinner seems to be getting you know, very well attended over recent years. Yes, the dinners, I think, probably had up to, up to 70, I think it might have been. I think Sky were pushing 70. I'm not exactly sure of the numbers, but uh, I think last year it was down a bit. Isla was not quite as big a a pull as it might have been uh, and I think we're already up to 55 for the dinner at Giggleswick in, in, at the end of August, early September so uh, it is certainly far bigger than it used to be. Well, the first one I went to back in 2002 I think we're probably only about 30 of us so it's, uh, it's moved on quite significantly over the years. And where usually is the um annual dinner situated? Oh, it's, it varies each year. Uh, I think we try, try to get the balance to, in, in accordance with the number of Marilyns in each country. So, because there's 1,200 in Scotland and only under 200 in England and 200, 200 in Wales, most of them tend to be in Scotland. Uh, I should say in remote parts of Scotland a lot of the time as well. So over the last couple of years, or the last few years, it's been Ullapool, Sky, Strontian, and uh, rumour is that ne next year it will be Helmsdale up in the far north. So it's, uh, but this year's Giggleswick, which is uh, the first proper English one, uh, but we've had it, I believe, because the previous one was in Ludlow, which is more of a Welsh marches, really. It's not, uh, it's, it was uh, most of the hills most people climbed, I think, that weekend were in Wales. <laughs> so. Well, I've only ever been to one. That was the Bilth meet about five years ago, and I'd highly recommend anybody to uh, to go to them. Um, again, for the uninitiated, Chris, because many people that probably will see this interview, they'll know many of the details that you're giving, but probably some people accessing the interview won't. Um, so for those people that would like to attend and never attended before, how can they find out details? Uh, well, the best things to 
go on the RHB mailing list and uh, put in an inquiry in there. Uh, this year's organiser is Ian Brown, uh, although he won't be available in the next week or two. I believe he's in America, but uh, he, he's, he's this year's organiser. But if, you'd, if somebody just goes onto the RHB mailing list and sends a query, then they can, uh, they'll, that'll be picked up by people and be responded to by somebody very quickly. And how do you access details for the RHB mailing list? It's, it's just RHB, uh, it's an RHB Yahoo group. So I think it's RHB, RHB at rhb.org.uk. So if you join that... And if, you, um, if you send a mail to that, then you'll, yeah. you'll get a response. Because that's another aspect of it, isn't it? The Yahoo users group. And we, we haven't sort of touched upon that yet. And that, mm. that has some good topics, doesn't it, occasionally? <laughs> that's a much of opinion, Mervyn. <laughs> uh, yes, I think it's... Uh, some people are completely unaware of it. It is advertised each year in the Hall of Fame newsletter more often, but uh, it's a lot of people just... It passes them by. We have to... We have to be uh, we, have, we have to be vetted, or rather, we have to be approved to 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 go on to the actual mailing list and contribute. Uh, so it's that is uh, something that people don't all, always want to do to to actually join a group. But uh, it's very interesting, of course. It is a way of finding out about all the things that are going on. If you don't keep your eye on it, then you can miss trips. Like somebody recently said, he didn't he hadn't spotted those trips to St Kilda. Uh, which was very well publicised and uh, on the mailing list. And if you don't read it, you'll, if you're not in it, you can't win it. Any idea of the membership of the um, No, Alan group? Dawson's in charge of it, but it's, I would say it's two to three hundred. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than that, but I'm not, I'm not sure. But it's, for me, a lot of it is sort of con- concentrated around the... Um, I suppose it's the details, isn't it, within sort of various listings of hills. But again, as you were saying, a lot of it is the organisation of the trips that people put together. Yes, well, um, it's certainly uh, it's a way of getting, if you want to organise a trip, if you want to organise a trip to a, a remote island with a marlin on it, then if you go onto the mailing list and just say that you're thinking of organising one, then there'll be a very quick response from people who want to go on a, such a trip. Or... We won't necessarily. You might have to organise it yourself. I mean, the general rule is if you really want to do something uh, and you want to do it fairly soon, then you'll have to organise it yourself. If you want to, if if you don't want to do that, then you'll just have to wait till the trip comes round. So we sort of touched upon the various sort of aspects of how the you know since the Marilyn, uh, since the Marilyn book in the Relative Hills, um, Marilyn List in the Relative Hills book. Uh, came out, how that sort of evolved to the annual events. But if we come now on to, you know, your role, Chris, as Chief Hump Hoffmeister and uh, Marilyn um, Hall of uh, Fame cataloger, um, what exactly does that sort of entail? Well, Do you sort of change... You're confusing the two there. The <laughs> Hump Hoffmeister is not the same as the Marilyn Hall of Fame. Oh, Marilyn isn't it? Secretary. Oh, what's the, what's the difference? Well, you knew that, didn't you? The... Hump Hall of Fame is is the related to the more relative hills of Britain book by Mark Jackson. So there are 29, 70 of those roughly. It goes up and down. Uh, but that, so the, the Hall of Fame uh, number for that is 1,200. So you have to do 1,200 out of, so it's roughly 40%. It's very similar to the 600 that you need to do with Marilyn's. So it's about 40% in both cases. And the upper Hall of Fame in both cases is a thousand or two thousand, which is uh, roughly seventy uh, percent. Yeah, I, I have to apologise because I didn't mean to confuse matters. But to me, one is a natural extension of the other. Although they were listed by different people, Mark Jackson and Alan Dawson. Um, but as you, as you were saying, the um, so when people achieve a certain total, and if they want their name complete as a as a you know catalogued within the hall of fame you're the person to send the details through to well for the marilyns you go to rhb at rhb.org.uk yeah and for the humps you come directly to me and say what's a 99 at talktalk.net yeah so that's two different things because the the marilyn one is part of a marilyn organization 
that the Hump's won is just one that I run. Uh. The Hump organisation is significantly less organised than the Marilyn organisation, yeah. which in itself is not very well organised. And when we were sort of discussing what to talk about before we uh, we pressed the on switch, I did say to you that it must be sort of a very proud moment in your life when you took over this role. I'm sure that's true, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? A proud role. Which particular role are we talking about? The Marilyn <laughs> membership secretary. <laughs> well, the both. Well, I think, <laughs> I'm trying to confuse matters really again. <laughs> it was, uh, yes, well, I, I mean, uh, the, uh, as far as the Hump Hall affair was concerned, uh, it was my discussions with Mark Jackson that brought it on. So I had to offer to to actually do the administration because he was busy doing a degree. Uh, so I, I suggested that the 2,000 figure which he did originally come up with was a bit unrealistic for the vast majority of us, which is proving to be the case, uh, and that 1,200 was more reasonable. So on, on that occasion I shot myself in the foot, so I've had to do it myself. Uh, the Marilyn Hall of Fame Membership Secretary, well, I, I took that over perhaps initially reluctantly, uh, just before Christmas, but uh, we didn't have anybody else to do it at the time. Uh, we had another volunteer, but he was having some problems uh, getting to grips with the system, so I took over at least for this year. So we shall see how it goes. Uh, any idea of the numbers, Chris, in each of the Hall of Fame? Uh, there's, I think we saw still only 49 in the Hump Hall of Fame. Uh, 170. Two, I think it is, in the Marilyn Hall of Fame, uh, but there's actually two of them. Two have disappeared, actually, so there's only 168 actually in the list for various reasons, which we won't discuss. But still, the those totals are very impressive, isn't it? Just yeah, well, compared with Munro's, it's not, is it? I mean, compared with Munro's, it's uh, a drop in the ocean, as is the uh, compared with the. Uh, Ill Walkers Register, Long Distance Walkers Association, which read, com- does English and Welsh completions and Wainwright completions, uh, they're well into the hundred. Well, I think Wainwright is pushing up to around a thousand. Obviously, it's only a small personal list, which most of us don't have too much time for, although I have done them. And, uh, and the English and Wales Register, I think, is pushing up to around 500. I suppose the... Um uh, I think for me, the, the impressive aspect is that um, even though the, you, you're not reaching the totals of you know Rob and Alan White and um, uh, Alan Holmes and Ken White for the Marilyns, that even to reach the uh, the Hall of Fame, you know to reach those totals, that when you've got something like you know the Munros, they're concentrated in Scotland, obviously a great achievement to 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 complete, but the Marilyns are spread far and wide, and it's one of the joys of the listing and the hubs. Yes. So you have to be pretty dedicated to get even into the Hall of Fame, don't you? To well, yes, I would say people who've done the Marilyn Hall of Fame have certainly covered a lot more of a country than people who've done the 280 Munros, of which only around 220 are Marilyns anyway. Uh, so it's uh, it's surprising. I mean, I've done 100 Munros and, and uh, all the English and Welsh 2,000 footers, and they've still only done 220 Marilyns. So. Uh. To get up to 600 for me was quite a, a long job, and I know I've got friends who are working towards it, and it's a long, long struggle to get there. When you, especially if you live in the, in the middle of England and uh, have a family, it's very, very difficult. So, do you know your exact Marilyn total at the moment and hump total? I think my Marilyn total is 881. Could be 882 if this is one. Well, I, ha- I and, think that's pretty impressive. And yeah. uh, I think the humps are probably up to around 1260 or 1270. I don't. I'm not that accurate on the humps. And wasn't there um, um, a joint um, hump hall of fame completion going back maybe a year or so that you were part of? Yes, the three of us got to 1200. Chris Biankowski, Jonathan Woods, and myself got to 1200 on the same hill. In uh, in the uh, uh, Howgill Fells, the uh, on Harter Fell in Howgill Fells, so that was quite a good do. Twenty, I think, the twenty three of us turned up, some from way up in Scotland, and uh, a good time was had by all. Well, brilliant. Well, congratulations for that, Chris. Um, I think to wrap up the interview, Chris, when you think of what we've discussed, you know, all albeit so briefly. You got the backlog, the bag of log. 
you got the Moore Hoffman magazine that comes out annually, the dinner, the Hall of Fame. Can you see what uh, the sort of future for it is and how it will sort of maybe evolve over the next five, ten years? Any idea? It's really difficult to say. Uh, personnel may change. Uh, they have tended to change a little, although I think John Woods was, has been the chairman right throughout uh, at every uh, annual dinner. I think John from Woods has been there and, uh, and Alan Dawson has been at all but one. Uh, yeah, the personnel may change, but I can't really see. It's not going to become very formal, a very formal organisation with uh, formal membership or or a membership fee or anything like that. Although any contributions towards the cost of producing Marhoff and are always appreciated, since it does it is quite an expensive 44-page uh, magazine to produce and to post out these days as well. So any contributions are welcome on that. Just a quick plug. I, I don't see any dramatic... I mean, we're all getting older. Well, the vast majority are getting older, so uh, it will be... Probably some younger blood may come in yeah. to to help to run things, but there's not that much needs to be done. It's the organisation skills to run things like the dinner uh, that, that we need, and which we've got in with a few members at the moment, which we have very successfully done in the last few years. And if anybody did want to contribute, who should they contact or where, where should they send payment through to? Well, again, if I go to rhb at rhb.org.uk and express an interest, then we, the treasurer, Alan Holmes, will get in touch with them and tell them what to do. Yeah, brilliant. So, any last comments, uh, Chris, before we uh, we close off? Well, just uh, nice to speak to you, Mervyn, and uh, on such a lovely sunny day in such a beautiful part of, of the country. And uh, let's just hope that it's a successful day as far as the surveying is concerned. It'll be a very interesting result, I think. So, Chris Watson, many, many thanks. Thanks, Mervyn.